Imposters are the impersonators, the masqueraders, the charlatans of society. Mostly, they are pathetic wannabes pretending to be something they are not. But sometimes, they are indeed ingenious and land up fooling many people. These are the great pretenders. Here then are 10 of the greatest impostors of all time. Paul Palaiologos Tagaris, Byzantine Religious Lies. Our countdown commences at number 10 by acknowledging that there have been impostors all throughout history. We go back to the Byzantine Empire of the 14th century to meet our first impostor, Paul Palaiologos Tagaris. He was a religious fraud of note in which he was appointed an Orthodox bishop and then pretended to be the Orthodox Patriarch of Jerusalem. He switched back to being a Catholic to be named the Latin Patriarch of Constantinople without any credibility to his ecclesiastical background. Mired in scandal, Tagaris was forced to repent and confess his sins before a synod in Constantinople in 1394. Count Alessandro de Cagliostro Counting on Mystique For number 9, we turn to the wealthiest royal courts of Europe and the man who took them by storm in the 19th century, Count Alessandro de Cagliostro. He was a glamorous figure who seduced royalty and rich with the occult arts, including psychic healing and even alchemy. He also claimed to be hundreds of years and kept youthful with his magic elixirs. For seven years, he wooed Europe and was even invited to become king of the independent Baltic state of Courland. Eventually, the impostor was revealed to be a Sicilian of modest means in his 40s by the name Giuseppe Balsamo, hardly an ancient count after all. Chavigny d'Eon, spying in drag. At number 8, we focus on France in the tumultuous 18th century and a man called Chevalier d'Eon. The Chevalier was a celebrated French diplomat, soldier, and spy. Deon was an androgynous and effeminate man who was also a fantastic mimic. For 33 years, Deon dressed as a woman and identified as female. As a woman, he was able to successfully infiltrate the royal court of Empress Elizabeth of Russia by pretending to be a woman and even become her lady-in-waiting, as a spy for France, of course. He would continue to dress as a woman, openly and in public, until the very end of his life. James Barry, the Lady Surgeon From male impostors who lived their lives as female, we turn to number seven, and a female impostor who lived her life as a man. James Barry was a surgeon who rose to be the Inspector General for all military hospitals in 1857 at the very height of the British Empire. It was only revealed upon the death of James Barry that he was in fact female and had been born in Ireland as Margaret Ann Bulkley. No wonder that Barry had always refused to undress in front of others and was intensely private. It soon became evident that James Barry was in fact the first woman to have ever practiced medicine as a doctor in Britain. Mary Baker, the Princess Caribou it all started on April 3, 1817, when a cobbler met a disoriented girl in Almondsbury in Gloucestershire, England, who was speaking in gibberish. Our number six imposter was taken in by a wealthy family, and soon people were convinced that the girl was Princess Caribou from the island of Javasu in the Indian Ocean. She scribbled in a strange alphabet and entranced the village with her strange words and dervish-like dancing. However, a woman spotted her portrait in a local newspaper, and soon the imposter was revealed as being Mary Wilcox from a small town in Devon. It turns out that Javasu was a pile of caribou after all. Wilhelm Voigt, Prussian military hack. Number five is about Wilhelm Voigt, a man who had spent 27 years of his life in prison for petty crimes. He had always been fascinated by the Prussian military and so one day, he bought a smart captain's uniform at a second-hand store in Potsdam. He walked around town and demanded that a number of soldiers salute him and then march behind him so that he could sequester money from the town treasury. His outrageous actions got him imprisoned, but Foyk became a folk hero in Germany, and he was eventually pardoned by Kaiser Wilhelm II. The petty criminal had become a mighty Prussian hero after all. Archibald Bellani, the Grey Owl from Prussian military nuts, we turn to a wise Canadian First Nations man at number four, 
He went by the name of Grey L and claimed that he had been born the son of a Scottish father and Apache mother. He would become a highly respected conservationist and author. Unfortunately, his excellent professional credentials were badly tarnished when it was found out after his death that his entire First Nations heritage had been a lie. He had been born British as Archibald Bellani, not a trace of Apache in the man called Grey Al. John Howard Griffin, black like him. Unlike most imposters who do what they do for fame, money, or to lie about who they really are, our number three on this countdown stands out as a man who became an imposter for all the right reasons. John Howard Griffin was an author and journalist from Texas who temporarily changed the color of his skin so that he could impersonate a black man in the Deep South in 1959. The result was a hugely influential book called Black Like Me that described the overt racism, violence, and outright daily humiliations that Griffin went through as a supposed black man. Sometimes it does take bravery to lie about who you are. Ferdinand Waldo de Mara, The Great Imposter Ferdinand Waldo de Mara is at number two and he impersonated so many different people that Hollywood made a 1961 movie about him called The Great Imposter, starring Tony Curtis. The sheer range of people that Damara impersonated was breathtaking. They included a civil engineer, a sheriff's deputy, an assistant prison warden, a hospital orderly, a child care expert, a Benedictine monk, a Trappist monk, a cancer researcher, a teacher, and even, rather fittingly, a doctor of applied psychology. Oh, and a lawyer too. Frédéric Boudin, the French chameleon. Our number one is the most recent imposter on our countdown, and also one of the most prolific. Frédéric Boudin has impersonated so many different people that the French press have dubbed him the chameleon. He started at a young age and claims he assumed 500 different false identities, including, famously, impersonating no less than three different teenagers who had gone missing. He even convinced a family in Texas that he, brown-eyed and with a French accent, was their long-lost blue-eyed son. Boudin claims he has stopped. Impersonating all those people probably exhausted him. Those, then, are 10 of the greatest impersonators in history. For more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out our other lists. And thanks for watching, and thanks for learning.